Hi, my name's Robin. Today we're going to make Cuban fiber rain pants for backpacking. Stay tuned. These are my other son's pants. So I made these last year. There are a few things that I learned that I'll try and pass on while making these. One is that Cuban fiber is so light that it doesn't hang exactly straight. It'll hang kind of crinkled up like this. And so you actually lose some of the length. I'll plan on making this pair about five to 7% a little bit longer than things would actually measure. So why, why make them out of Cuban fiber? Well, one thing is with backpacking with kids is that you wanna have everything as light as possible because he's carrying all of his gear on his back. These are the pants that fit my six-year-old son and they weigh 1.4 ounces, 40 grams, which is really great. They hardly add, add anything to the weight of his pack. Of course, the other benefit of making homemade rain pants is that when my kids are changing their size every year, the cost of going up in size on rain pants is relatively small compared to the cost of buying a new pair of rain pants. Here's what you'll need for this project. Besides a sewing machine, you'll need Cuban fiber, which I bought from ZPAC's website. There are other websites online for do-it-yourself backpacking gear where you can get Cuban fiber. As well, you need polyester thread. I don't think heavy-duty thread is required for rain pants. You might want to consider that if you'd be making something like a tarp. You'll need a bungee cord, a permanent marker, either a razor blade or an exacto knife, a seam gauge, scissors, Cuban fiber tape, masking tape, as well a roll of parchment paper or some other large roll of paper or cardboard for tracing a pattern. You'll also need a cutting mat for cutting the material on or cardboard as backing. And last but not least, I've got my son's snow pants here to use for making a pattern. With this pair, I'm gonna try and make a gusseted crotch, so like a diamond shape um, at where the crotch comes in. I measured these already, and um, this inseam is 22 inches. As I said, I'm gonna put an extra, uh, about 5% on that, which is about an inch and a half. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this, kind of rough tracing just with the pants on here. And I use snow pants because with the rain pants, I definitely wanna make sure that they're gonna fit over my son's clothing. And so by using snow pants as a pattern, it gives enough volume to the pants to allow it to work. And what can be even better is if the pants can fit over his shoes. Now, at the waist, I'm also going to add an extra two inches. Uh, one f is for uh, when I fold the Cuban fiber over for running the bungee cord through the waist. And then as well, I found that it's helpful to have these pants be a little bit higher waisted than regular pants. So I'm going to add an extra two inches or so up here at the top. So we've got that there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark my midline loosely, and I'm going to cut this out, fold it over. So now I'm just going to measure and make sure that I've got equal distance on the top and bottom. So altogether this comes out to 36 and a half inches right down here. I'll double check this side. 
double check and make sure everything's going to fit together well. I'm just going to cut out one side, fold it in half, and then make sure that it's going to sew together appropriately. All right, let's fold that in half. And as I said, it's good to err on the side of extra volume so these can fit well over his tennis shoes when he's hiking so we don't have to stop and remove shoes before putting the rain gear on. In Colorado, the thunderstorms always come up really fast. So now I'm just gonna trace this again here. When I made the pants for them last summer, I made the patterns from their blue jeans and they just really fit a little bit too snugly for for what would be appropriate for rain pants. So I'll lay this out. I'll leave enough room for some seam allowance. You know, the permanent marker, obviously, it's, it's going to be there forever, um, but since it's just rain pants for backpacking, they're definitely function over form, um, so it's no big deal. When I sew the inseam together, I'm going to use a flat felt seam, so I need to use a 5 inch H seam allowance. That's where the seam gauge comes in handy. I just set that at 5 eighths of an inch. And I'll just make marks here um, where I want to cut the uh, Cuban fiber material. And I'll do th the same thing on the other side. As well, I'm going to add an extra 3 quarters of an inch for seam allowance on the lower edge. And the top I already accommodated for the, um, the hem roll. Um, and the slot for the elastic. So when I'm cutting Cuban fiber, I use an X-Acto knife. The Cuban fiber can't be cut with scissors. And I just go along this dotted line. And you just go all the way around, same way. So now I'm just gonna line up, line up the uh, seams on the Cuban fiber. So now when I'm getting ready to sew here, I'm going to actually just use tape to get the whole seam approximated. Using pins will leave a permanent hole, so I'm not using pins for it, but just some masking tape helps hold that together. And then I can just go ahead and start right here down at the bottom of the pant leg and then all the way up to this spot right here. I'm going to leave it open after this because I'm going to put that diamond gusseted crotch in here. So before sewing it is worthwhile to take just some scrap material to make sure you've got your settings right, particularly when you're using um, something expensive like this tubing fiber. So like I said I'm just going to start here at the bottom of the pant leg on that inner seam. And then I just go right along that line. I'm just going to untape the seam. So now to um, move on with the flat felt seam, I'm just going to press, finger press open this seam right here. The Cuban fiber really does form a seam really well, so just flatten that open. And then I'm just going to trim this material down to, so it's about a quarter of an inch. So I've got a quarter of an inch marking on my cutting mat right here, and that makes it easy. And I'm going to take the longer edge 
and I'm going to fold it over the shorter edge once right at the level of the seam so the edge of the longer edge comes right to the level of the seam and I'll press that down and I'll fold it over one more time so that makes will make a really nice finished edge so there's no raw fabric exposed along that seam. And I'm just going to sew then from here, from this end point here all the way up to the same point where I stopped right there. This gets a little bit tricky to keep the material from going from the back side of the material getting sewn to the front. So just make sure you take your time. As you can probably suspect, these aren't the most quiet hiking pants to wear, but they work. Now I'm going to sew down the, um, the cuff. I'm just going to turn the pants inside out, fold this down once, all the way around the cuff. And then one more time. And I'll just sew this in place. By the way, this sewing machine is not anything fancy. I think I got it for $80 or so on Amazon. So just back sew and then sew all the way around. these inside out while I line up the seams at the crotch. I've got the two pieces of fabric aligned and I'm just going to sew another flat felt seam along the crotch. stop a little bit before the edge to make room for the gusseted crotch. And again, I'm going to make this a flat felt seam. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that on the back part of the pants, I'm going to sew the seam all the way up to the edge. On the front, I'm just going to stop the seam right here because I need to make allowance for the loop um, for the drawstring to come out. So we'll show you how that'll be done in a few minutes. So I've got the front and back parts of the crotch sewn. And I'm just gonna turn the pants inside out to fill in the gusset and crotch. So here at the gusseted crotch part of things, I'm actually just gonna tack down the patch here and then I can take the tape away. Now I'm just going to tack down the um, gusset so I don't have to worry about the tape as I'm sewing that around. So the crotch gusset was kind of hard for me to do. I haven't done that before. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily take this as gospel for how to do this. Um, after having the 
diamond shape cut out. There is some extra material here. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. So this is how it looks. This is on the inside of the pants. I'm going to put Cuban fiber tape on here to flatten this edge out. From the outside, it doesn't look too bad and it definitely gives a little bit of extra volume right there. So I'm, next I'm going to get the drawstring done. And if you recall the front of the pants, I left the top of the hem unsewn. So I'm gonna fold those edges down like this and I will sew those edges down to leave this opening open. And the drawstring will come through this opening here. Now you can see how this is sewn down and I'm going to fold this over twice. One. Now, I think I'm done with the sewing machine. And next thing I need to do is I'm just going to put Cuban fiber tape on the seams, all of the seams except for the the waist because I this doesn't need to be waterproof. It'll be underneath this jacket. I'm just gonna tape around this gusseted crotch first, and then we'll do the longer seams. If you don't have the Cuban fiber tape, you could consider using like seam grip. Um, I have used that in the past on other minor projects, but it can be pretty tacky. Then I'm just going to do the same thing at the cuffs at the lower end, and I'm just going to um, also put tape along the crotch. I'll just reinforce this, these points right here next to where the drawstring will come out. So I'm just gonna feed this length of shot cord through this loop in the pants. All right, so now I've got these, this elastic cord fed through the channel here. And I'm just gonna put this cord lock on. So there we've got our finished product. The cord lock uh, fastened to the elastic cording. So Jack, walk back and forth in them, side by side in front of the couch. Yeah. Right in front of the couch. So there's the finished product. Plenty of room to fit over his blue jeans today and his hiking pants that went around the trail. Comfortable sitting down? Very comfortable. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more DIY projects, be sure to let us know in the comments below.